Hey guys, welcome. So yeah, as you can probably tell by the, uh, the thumbnail and the t uh, title description, it's the final part of where I'm up to now. The pond's finished being dug, the walls have been built, and we're now gonna take you right the way through, filling it up, getting the fish in, getting the filters working, although that came before the fish. Yeah, sit back, relax, and uh, we'll take you through the journey to where I am now. Hey guys, my name is Jamie, this is Keeping It Coy. Welcome back to the channel, and if you're new, welcome. I hope to earn your subscription today. So yeah, in today's video, as I say, it's the third and final part of uh, where I'm up to on the uh, on the pond build. We'd left off that I'd just finished the dig and building the pond walls, and I just started work on the uh, on the fielder house. So we, uh, we're gonna kick this one off with uh, just checking on how big the fry are, and then we're uh, gonna crack right into what I had to do with the drum to get it where it needed to go. So, uh, funny story. But yeah, stick around and enjoy. Stick around to the end of the video because there's a bit more information for any of my new subscribers or any new people that are here today. Um, bit of information about the actual pond build itself. So stick around to the end and uh, I hope you enjoy. So here we are, these are the fry. Um, you can't see very well in the tank at this stage because they were outgrowing it fast. So. Uh, as the uh, poorly fish that were in the black vat are now gone, starting to move uh, them little by little out there. Fence is now painted. That's looking an absolute treat. As you can see, they're gone for the good old black and red. It uh, took some effort. I had to move the filter house to get that painted, but uh, never mind. Weren't hard to take it back down and put it back up again. Whilst I had the paint out, thought I'd do uh, a bit of painting on the old decorations for the garden just some of my uh, Japanese art I was working on. And then the day had finally come where I needed to uh, install the drum. Unfortunately, although as you know from the last video, it was in my uh, pergola in the back garden, it didn't fit out of the pergola door. So like the sleepers, I had to carry it back through the house all the way round. And this is the walk I had to do uh, with all the sleepers, the drum, all the soil and everything else I had to either get rid of or put in. But once the drum was in position, we could then start working on the pipe work. So you can see here, I'm just uh, cutting and measuring, getting everything ready um, to where I need to go. That's the uh, both in lines there. Got a few plaques uh, arrive as well. This one was from uh, Koyagi Designs. Um, but yeah, back on the pipe work. Um, just starting the process of actually getting bits uh, glued up in place, getting the uh, union valve, union for the uh, ball valve there, getting that glued on. Again, plenty of glue, make sure we get a, a nice good seal and push it all the way in. Some people give it a little twist. I was always told not to, but each to their own. Um, I did have a few leaks, but not where I'd done any gluing. So uh, you might see that a bit later. So yeah, get the unions in place, uh, all ready to go. Just getting the bits glued up that I can do without doing any dry runs or dry fits, just so I know where everything's sat, so I can then work out my dry runs. So I'm just putting my uh, ball valve in there in place. Yeah, also managed to pick up some uh, extra insulation from a, a fella koi keeper from the uh, Peterborough Koi Club. So that was going to insulate the uh, the sides of the filter house and the roof and it also did the doors as well which was a bonus so uh, yeah cut me hole then for the skimmer line get the skimmer line through just uh, working it all out getting the depths that i want um, 
and everything there. At this stage, we had a bit of a disaster. Um, you can see that the step is propped up by uh, one of the old scaffolding boards from the old pond. Uh, unfortunately, one of the major rainstorms we had uh, that winter collapsed the step and I had to rebuild it. Um, so yeah, this, this made this part of the pond build very difficult, but again, you'll see that in a bizzle. So uh, that's the uh, skimmer line dry fitting. Just making sure everything all fits and then I take it apart and glue it all up. And again, yeah, it worked a treat. None, none of the uh, outlines, the, the skimmer or the uh, drain leaked, but I did have a couple of little leaks um, from the uh, return lines. So uh, yeah, stay tuned for that laughter. That is a return line. That's me lowest down return line I could do. But I've realized at this stage, um, or I think at this stage, or maybe it was another stage, but yeah, I've realized uh, you'll see in a little while. Anyway, CT1 arrived, ready to uh, start putting the liner in. That's going to be for the window, the bottom drain, the skimmer, and the uh, return lines as well. Yeah, the skimmer line and the bottom drain and the air line was then all glued up all hunky-dory and uh, look to treat. Obviously, the only way you can test if they work is fill the pond up with water. So uh, that was the next stage. Um, but yeah, got the uh, other side of the field house then up. But yeah, obviously, as I said, the storms uh, really made it difficult getting this pond done. So uh, had to drain out the uh, bottom drain. Got the old pond back out for that. What a mess that left. Half of the soil from the step when it first collapsed pushed that bucket out of the way and uh, filled that up with mud as well. So that was fun. So we got all that sucked out and I think it took about three vacuum loads to actually fully empty it because obviously the uh, bottom drain line run was all full of water as well. But there you go. Got it all clean as a whistle or as clean as I could do. Ready to start getting the uh, liner and underlay in. Underlay, underlay. Love that word. But yeah, all clean and pretty, ready to go. So start working on the underlay. Um, there's literally one, one sheet of underlay down all the sides, but on that step there, there is actually a piece of carpet underneath the underlay. There's then a double folding of underlay uh, over the top because it was a two meter wide underlay and the step is just short of a meter. So I just left it folded in half. Um, so it's double there. And then uh, it also had a triple as well when I uh, put the next bit in but uh, yeah just got the uh, rest of the filter house insulated put a uh, shelf in as well which also added a lot of extra strength and support to the walls which uh, worked out quite well actually that shelf's uh, really helping out so then I've got the uh, rest of the underlay in and the as I say the step now is a piece of carpet and three to four lots of underlay so yeah any of the stones and rubble um, that was on there is not going to be any problems. Pond liner itself, oh, what a nightmare that was. Um, because obviously of the step and nothing was perfectly straight, you know, it was very, very difficult because when you're getting a box weld liner, they can only make straight lines. Um, so yeah, it, it didn't fit perfectly and that was part down to the pond um, having the step and part down to the measurements weren't, 100% spot on on the liner itself um, but it's working it's still holding water and the water has been in now for what nine ten months so uh, yeah that's uh, pretty darn good but it was so so heavy and I, it's one job that I would recommend if you've got a decent side pond and you're putting in a liner get a friend to help I had to do all this on me Todd and I tell you what it wasn't easy. It really wasn't. I mean, that, that thing weighed nearly as much as I did. Um, and you pull from one end and then the other end comes out and you pull the other end and then that end comes out. But anyway, I got it roughly in situ. So it was time to start working on uh, the bottom drain. I uh, fiddled around with the base, made sure all the corners were in the corner as much as they possibly could be before I uh, made any decisions on screwing or cutting though. But all my stuff's out, the stuff I need to stick it down, me cleaning stuff for myself and the, the lines and whatnot. So, uh, yeah, and there's my dome there ready to go. So make sure when you're doing this, you've got everything ready. 
So what I did first, screw in my top flange just with two screws, just so I can uh, cut my hole um, exactly where I need it to be without the liner pulling um, in any weird and wonderful directions because I wanted it, you know, where I wanted it. So screwed that in first, cut me hole, and then I re-removed the flange to glue it down. So gave it a quick wipe round um, with a dry cloth, made sure there was no dust or dirt on it. Once that was done, under there, completely covered the uh, top with silicone, um, squished the liner onto the silicone, and then squished the flange down onto the uh, onto the liner. I did put a small bead underneath the flange as well, just for added uh, protection. Now, unless you're confident with a, a drill or an impact driver, I wouldn't recommend using one at this stage, but I am a handyman by trade and I use this thing a hundred times a day. So uh, as you can see there, I did do the very final stage though, just to be safe, even on myself, with a screwdriver as well. Um, once that was all down, neatened it all up with my finger, make sure it's all squidged out all the way around. If it hasn't squidged out properly, keep going, keep screwing. Um, obviously you need a big thick bead down there, but it needs to just squeeze out. It doesn't need to be a lot squeezed out, but if it hasn't squeezed out, you ain't gone down far enough. But you also don't want to squeeze it completely out because as it dries, that's what creates your rubber gasket. Now I said in the main video when I first did this, it's not neat and it's not pretty, but it's sealed. That weren't going to leak. And uh, got the bottom drain glued in as well. Mine's a screw off, so I, I did glue the uh, pipe in position. And then if I ever need to take it off for whatever reason, I'll just have to jump in the pond and unscrew it. But as you can see, once the glue had dried, the air was working a treat. Now, because the step had collapsed and I was worried about it recollapsing, I fitted the bottom drain and started filling all on the same day. Now, I know a lot of people say leave it 24, 48 a week before doing that, but I was worried about my step collapsing. So I left my bottom drain two hours. But uh, I did use CT1, which in my opinion is one of the best, if not the best. And uh, it also claims on the bottle, and I've tested it, that it does um, dry underwater um, and, and go off, basically. And it actually does. So uh, there's me climbing in the pond, um, straightening out the liner. Now, as you can see, the base of the liner has not a single wrinkle in it. And it actually doesn't. It's as flat and as smooth as a baby's bum. So uh, yeah, I was well chuffed that I managed to get every single wrinkle out of the floor. Shame about the walls. Um, but yeah, if, if you watch any of my more recent videos, you'll you'll be able to see a few wrinkles in the walls. Not hundreds, but uh, it's just where, as I say, the liner didn't fit perfectly, perfectly. But bear in mind, this was not fully into spring yet. I think, well, we was, I suppose. We were about March, I think, by the time I was uh, filling it up. But the uh, water out of the tap there was about 11 or 12 degrees. So uh, standing in that ankle deep was pretty darn cold. And uh, it ends up becoming uh, knee deep later. But uh, yeah, that's just probably me telling you how cold it was. So left it filling through the night or into the night, should I say. Um, just, just enough so it kept pressure on the step because I didn't want it collapsing again. I mean shouldn't do when the line is over it because it's not going to get any further wet but i'd rebuilt that and um, so it was only compacted as much as i could do it by hand you know um so yeah so anyway once that was all done obviously as you can see liner is all in nice and straight along the bottom it was then a case of uh, start working on the rest getting the sides uh, as neat and as straight as physically possible in the meantime though I got, got the doors on because I was still waiting for a few bits and bobs uh, to arrive. So got the doors on the uh, on the filter house. They're working a treat. Again, you might remember that scene from my uh, opening credits. Again, while I was waiting for other parts, I start working on the return line. So that's now the return coming out of the drum through a ball valve. And at the bottom there is where my pump was going to sit. That's already got me uh, union on there ready to go. Also got my waistline uh, fitted as well. That's just black waist, uh, 110 mil. And uh, all I've done at the moment, it's still a temporary solution, is I've got a uh, open-ended T there, 
with a rubber nine, uh, not a rubber ninety, a rubber reducer down to two inch, just so if it gets blocked up with leaves and things, I can get to it. Back into the pond, so I've filled it up above the step. Um, got me a little floating pond skimmer in there, just to basically skim off the dust and everything. I'm about to climb in and start working on the next section, and it was a bit dusty, so that was cleaning that while I'm working on this. So again, like I did with the bottom drain, screw it into place, cut me hole out. Once my hole was cut, take the flange back off, give it a clean, dry it off. Big old lump of silicone all the way around the uh, inner flange there. And then uh, once that's all in and done, screw it back on. There you can see, all screwed in, neaten it up. Get rid of all that uh, silicone that's squeezed out. As you can see, I've got a lovely bead that's squeezed out there. And uh, what I also did, uh, you don't have to do this, but I did it. Just put a little dab of CT1 just over each uh, each screw, basically, just so there is absolutely nothing in the pond that the fish can uh, scratch themselves on. Then it was time to do the skimmer. So cut me hole, put me CT1 on, stuck me liner to that. That all then looked quite neat and tidy. And it was a case of uh, screwing the uh, flange onto the front of that. Now, there was no uh, pre-drilled holes in this one, so I had to make my own. But uh, So I clamped it into place, marked it out, put my silicone on, and then got the old screwdriver back out and screwed it back into place. I did the same thing as I did with the uh, return line down there. Just put a little dab of silicone over each one of the screw holes as well. Again, still waiting for a few more bits, so to set on my boredom, I built myself a Japanese garden. Another little pond. Uh, this is just a nature pond. It's never going to have any fish in it, although it is currently my Daphnia culture. And even that we are now towards the end of November, um, this probably is coming out in December for you guys, but it's the end of November for me. And the Daphnia culture that's in there is still thriving. So uh, again, I did a few videos on that if you want to go back and... Uh, and check that out but yeah that's my japanese garden got all my aces and all the other trees and bits and bobs that were sat on the other side of the garden all now where they were going to end up i wanted to build something there because the fence is there and the sun is constantly behind that fence all day all year um i don't get a lot of grass there so i wanted to put something there so that the grass never grew very well there basically because of the lack of sunlight so yeah Back onto the uh, return lines, got the pump in. I've got that bag over the pump just for now, just in case I dripped any glue. Um, did not fancy dripping glue on or in the pump anywhere because <laughs> that would be a nightmare. Um, obviously, most of the parts to the pump are plastic and the solvent well glue is designed to melt to plastic. So just putting a T in here. Uh, this ball valve is straight after the pump and then just putting a T there for me to... Uh, return lines the one going straight up goes through the uv and then the one that goes around the back uh, is the one currently going to my backy shower uh, i've done it this way off one pump basically split it because uh, this is the line coming out the back there basically if for any reason that it gets extra extra cold and i've got to turn the backy shower off then the other line will still go through the UV if I need the UV on. It's generally off during the winter for myself, but just in case um, I've got that option to turn the shower off and keep the UV on and the impon return on. Speaking of UVs, getting it all glued up now, all I did was put a straight two inch uh, Cockney Koi connector uh, onto it there. There the uh, the I believe the Cockney Koi ones, they were the cheapest ones in the shop, but they were the ones that were the best fit. And yeah, it worked an absolute treat. I put, uh, rather than unions on it, I put Cockney Koi's and then a ball valve on each section, just so I've got ultimate control of what goes to the shower and what goes to the impon return. There is a ball valve on the shower line as well, um, but that gives me absolute full control then of what speed I can do absolutely everything. Um, but yeah, that, that was in and that was on and well not turned on but in and working 
and that the back pipe there you can see next to the fence is the skimmer line which is the ball valve there on the skimmer line so uh, yeah that's the return lines almost complete you'll see there they've all got uh, oh this this is the uh, rookie mistake i've made i realized i'd not put a ball valve on my return line next to the pond so if for whatever reason i had issues or needed to change that line for whatever reason if that line burst or it split or turned off then obviously my pond would drain down to that point and that return is actually the lowest point possible my pond could drain to so uh, yeah getting back looking at the fry they are growing an absolute tree all these are the fry that i had from september the year before uh, at this point as i say we're just sort of into march now so they have grown an absolute beast some of them in there now we're pushing 30 centimeters so yeah uh, as you saw earlier all my return lines are on tank connectors and uh the reason I've done this is because I wanted flexi hose because of the way my pipe work was going to go. And um, this is the Fikawazi stuff, solvent welded, the whole shebang, as you can see there. I've now got my ball valve on there as well. But yeah, it's solvent weldable, but the amount of extra 90s and, and everything I would have had. Filling the pond up even more, as you can see, that's working a treat. That's the purge line there. Just testing, making sure water was in the pipe, and it was. So we keep filling. We're now just sitting under the window line. So it was about time. The reason I did it step by step and had to keep climbing in and, and whatnot with the water, because the liner didn't fit very well, I needed it to be pushed right into its final position for myself before I uh, cut the window, because I didn't want to cut the window while it was empty, put the window in, fill it up with water, and then the pressure of the water pull the liner off the window. Did not want that at all. Yeah, you can see there, that's my steel frame that I've got the window set on. That You saw me doing that in the last video. Got me CT1 around the uh, around the sleepers. The way I'm doing it is I've stuck the window to the sleepers and uh, that held no problem at all. I left that for a good 24 hours. And as you can see there, it's got a good bond through all the uh, silicone, just making sure the window was level, which we were pretty much bang on there. Uh, it still looks bang on to this day, so it's not moved. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, got them on suckers, pulling it in um, as much as I could. I mean, got the skimmer going again the next day, ready to uh, to stick the liner on, getting the, all the surface cleared. Quick look at the fry again, bit bit of a better look there. You can see that they're doing well, and a lot of them are still in my pond now, which is fantastic. Well chuffed with the ones that I. Uh, kept off them there was a couple i was sad to see go to be honest but uh yeah cracking fry all right time to get the uh liner all glued in place so gave it all a good clean put a very large bead of silicone all the way around it now my recommendation you can do it your own way but is one big bead don't try and do two three four beads down it because that can leave air gaps in between each bead and you don't want that so uh yeah, one big bead and then all i do is work around the window squidging it all in and uh again like a, like you do with the flange on the uh, bottom drain and the return you just keep pushing it until it just starts to protrude once that's done give it a wipe good tip bit of fairy liquid on your finger and that will smooth off a treat um, and if you do get ct1 on your skin um builders wipes um, i use big wipes from uh, b and q other retailers are available but uh, yeah remove ct1 with ease absolute ease so yeah that was all now sealed it was just a case of waiting for it to dry and i could fill her up because of the bead of silicone that i'd left in there um, it did take about three or four days to fully cure before I could fill up the rest but uh, you can see there it was a nice neat job once it had finally dried it was the big fill day nerve-wracking but not a single leak so far no leaks on any of the underground pipe work no leaks on the bottom drain run or any of the valves where the where the water had got to at this stage so I was well chuffed with that I thought I'd done a grand job I was really happy with that considering this this is the first pond I've built bottom drain wise so uh, just starting to break the skimmer yeah once that once that had all gone over check the skimmer line for leaks then as well and again not a single leak from any of the outlets from the pond so it was well chuffed with that maximum level as you can see it's actually the same height as the sleeper there um, it actually does run about two centimeters lower than that 
but I just wanted to check and make sure that everything was all hunky-dory and I knew as soon as I opened the valves to the filter the pond level was going to drop quite a bit anyway and it actually did dropped a lot more than I thought it would that was a bonus so anyway opening the uh, drum opening all the ball valves let that fill up still no leaks at this stage so yeah I was really really happy and chuffed with myself at, at this moment in time you can probably tell drums all filled up it's all at the right line and then i finally uh turned my pump on and there was my leak not a small leak but uh, again it was a rookie mistake by myself the uh in pond return this one dull i'd left closed so the pressure of the water had actually uh pushed the other valve that we just saw leak in there wide open and slipped a thread so never mind all fixed now got my levels all as good as i possibly could massive uh, shout out to phil from telford koi pond there taught me through a, a few things i could do and to get it all singing and dancing and we were off i had a full and working pond uh, didn't have me shower or anything on it at the minute as you can see that's still at the uh, black vat at the back but uh, yeah time for some copings so found some wood that fitted absolutely perfect it was actually uh fence kickboards and because i most of you will probably know they're as rough as anything so big sander came out and spent a couple of days sanding them down and then gave them a lick of paint and uh yeah i thought they looked quite good to be honest um right time to move some more fish into the uh into the main pond so these were the uh first big fish that were going in and there they go so first fish now into the pond happy days we have a fully functioning and working pond bear in mind the only filtration they've got at the minute is the drum and the little bio that comes with the drum so i did only put a few in to start off with back to the uh back to working on the filter house time to get the roof on mine's uh, marine plywood built a frame for it put some supports on it screwed it all and glued it all together and then got it on looks quite neat and tidy there didn't it once it was on an in situ got some hinges on it propped up with a bit of wood at the minute but uh, it weren't long once the hinges were on um, i think this was all done in a day to be honest got then some uh, little hydraulics if you're looking to put a hydraulic roof on the cheapest hydraulics you can find for that kind of thing are ottoman bed hydraulics work an absolute treat covered the roof with a pond liner that's edpm rubber liner if i've said that right and uh, once it was all cut neat and trimmed i stapled it in underneath and as you can see the hydraulics are now working a treat so I did find one problem with it though that uh, on a very windy day it was being blown up and the hydraulics were a bit bit too powerful but we'll come to that later um, my new fit the fish that I just put in the new pond spawned which is what I was hoping for uh, the green water probably really helped with that which is why I left it green uh, whilst I put them in there's a few more fish in the pond now at this stage um, starting to move them over uh, bit by bit uh, for those of you that have followed my journey through this it was about two or three at a time i believe and um, so once there was enough in there i'd moved the shower onto this pond as you can see there and i'd emptied the fish from the black uh, blagdon pond into the blue vat so they've now got bigger space as well insulated the roof as you can tell here insulated the rest of the filter house as well everything was insulated at that time even the doors time to start printing it up so got all my decorations out that i've got along the way i decided the plaque that i got that was unpainted i want it paint i wanted it painted so i painted it myself and then started putting all the plaques up that i picked up along the way so there's two there and then me jamie's koi pond at the top i actually bought that before i named my channel so uh, yeah apologies jamie's koi pond <laughs> um yeah because of the uh roof popping up i waited it at the front with uh, sort of a Japanese design there, a big lump of wood. Um, this was my new fish, a 52 centimetre chagoy. It's uh, Japanese from Ogata, if I've pronounced that right. Ogata Koi Farm, absolute stunning. It, it's like a burnt orange. It really is a nice chag jinrin as well. Um, very, very happy with that. It's currently my favourite in the pond at the minute. Very, very blingy fish. And there he goes past the window. So... After that, finally got my new backy shower. There was a bit of time between that and that because um, I know it seems like I'd only just put the other one up. But no, there was a good four or five months in between. But yeah, new backy shower. Got that up and running. As you saw in that first clip, I got that from JS Koi. 
absolute cracking bit of kit if you're in the market for a backy shower go check them out once that was installed time to uh, remove the manky old wooden roof that wasn't really up there permanently anyway um, for some uh, nice polycarb that aid the koi keeper uh, had given me that's now up and, and ready to go and then uh, it was me bamboo time so starting me je uh, jump guards here basically you can see there i've got one jump guard on at, at that particular moment over the window and uh, the plan is to get them jump guards all the way around the pond i've got one in, on the floor in the pergola there all made ready to go um, and what i'm doing with them is they're all easy lift on and lift off um, as you can see i'm just lifting it back on now um, and yeah easy lift on and lift off got little little uh, drop hinge brackets on e either side and that's going to be the same each bit of bamboo all the way round so uh yeah and that guys pretty much brings us up to date as where i'm up to now as you can see the bamboo is all where i left it the jump guards are in the pergola here with me at the minute just got to get them all painted up i haven't finished them yet i've got two ready to go i've got the one that was in the video clip there which is the little one to go over the window and I've got a bigger one uh, down here beside me ready to go that goes uh, along this side here all the way along that side uh, so yeah got a bit more to go on there and the fish are still doing great got the bubbles turned right down now because uh, the pond is now down to eight degrees as you can see, water is gin clear. Fishies are happy as Larry. And uh, yeah, the smaller toesi are doing great as well. Yeah, there's still plenty more I need to do. The uh, backy shower running over there. Um, needs to be reset um, it's not its final position I need to dismantle it sort the uh, area it sat on and uh, replumb all that in lovely fishies um, yeah and then last thing I've really got to do with this and I need to get that done ASAP now it's just a case of money but I just need to finish off the uh, electrics in the uh, in the filter house and the, the 300 odd fry I've got in there, um, it was 250 plus my own spawning plus another load I've picked up along the way. So yeah, there's over 300 fry in that uh, vat now. They're all doing fantastic. And then yeah, once this pond's finally finished, this area is being ripped out. I've already removed one of the uh, flower beds that was there. This area's been uh, ripped out. And then uh, I'm building a new tow side tank or growing on tank there. Um, got fair bit of room to do it I'm hoping to get slightly more water only just than what I've got in there that's just shy of 2,000 litres that vat but with the filtration is just over 2,000 litres so I'm hoping that uh, I'll be able to get roughly the same just over 2,000 litres um, out of that space there doing that one with bricks might possibly put a window on it again it depends on funds at the time and how many bricks I've got if I've got enough bricks to continue then I may just do that but uh, yeah, got a big old pile of bricks. So yeah, I hope you like this uh, three-part mini-series. Um, if you want to see the uh, full step-by-step -step guide on how I actually built this pond, it's in great detail. Um, a lot of people laughed at me. I think there was about 55 parts or something like that. Um, but I show everything in detail on how I've done every step of this pond build bit by bit from the screws I used to the rebar I used to everything how I fitted the bottom drain how I fitted the window yeah so that's about it for today guys um, hope you've liked this three part mini series um, it, it's uh, all inclusive of how I've built my pond but if you want to see it in full detail wait till the end of the video and I'll tell you how you can do that um, but yeah uh, everything's tick along nicely i hope i've earned your subscription today um, if you do consider subscribing you'll be able to follow me along my uh, next pond build when i get round to the uh, tow side tank um, but yeah if you have any questions about how i built this pond most of them 
Uh, most of the questions you may have will be uh, answered here. This is my playlist of how I built my pond step by step and I did show in a great detail. Check it out if you want to know how I've done anything and uh, if you've got any questions feel free to drop me a message, leave me a comment, drop me an email, find me on Facebook. So thank you all for watching, give us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed the video and we'll catch you all on the next one.